The bandwidth for this episode of Fat to Fit HQ is sponsored by the Firearms Radio Network, firearmsradio.tv. Welcome to the Fat to Fit HQ podcast. I'm your host, Carol Salva of the Firearms Radio Network. In this podcast, we're chronicling our journeys from fat to fit. We talk about pursuing a healthier lifestyle, not only in diet, but in all areas of life. Hello, thanks for joining me today. I have an amazing guest. We have Roger Dickerman from Relentless Roger and the Caveman Doctor. And I know a lot of you guys can't wait for this because we've missed them for about three months. And I'm going to ask him about it. I'm going to say, Roger, what is up? (laughs) You can't do this to us. No, I'm sure we'll get into that. And I hear they're coming back, so that's great. And we'll let Roger tell you a little bit more about himself. But he is one of the resources that we speak about on this show all the time as um, if if you're just getting started and you don't want to be overwhelmed and you want to know where to go, He has a great action plan that you can get that's very easy and it's doable, and I'm sure we'll talk about it. He's also a gym owner, and he's also a podcaster for a while now with a lot of credibility with Dr. Colin Champ on that show, Relentless Roger and the Caveman Doctor. We'll link to all of that, and I'll let Roger tell you more about him. This show, I'm hoping I'm going to talk to him about rest and recovery You might be able to tell. I don't know. I'm a little congested. I was more than a little congested this weekend. I was very, very sick. I'm going to play a little clip of when I dragged myself out of bed to capture some of my illness for you guys. Because at the time, I was like, I'm such an idiot that I didn't slow down and listen to my body and recover well because I was so sick this weekend. I had my kids in San Antonio to go to SeaWorld and that night I was so ill that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to take them the next day. And so we did end up going, but here's just a little clip. I'm not going to play the whole intro like I thought I was going to from my deathbed (laughs) because it's just too horrific. But here's just a little bit of that. Right now I'm in vacation with my family in San Antonio, Texas, which is a fantastic place to take your children if you are not sick. (laughs) Yes, excuse my cough. I'm not surprised if I have pneumonia. (laughs) And I tell you that because... I think I'm. Gonna, I think that's one one of the big things I'm going to talk to Roger about on on Monday when we record, is recovery. I'm really disappointed with myself that I lied to myself when I started getting sick about a week ago that I was really slowing down and it was just walks that I was doing. I, you know, I didn't get the sleep I needed to get. I let this dang Fitbit. You know, and the fact that Maureen Euclid got a Fitbit. <laughs> get me out the door and walking, 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 when really I should have probably slowed down. And, you know, yes, they were casual walks. Some of them were a little more in the fat burning zone. I just should have taken some downtime. And um, so that and a couple of other big errors, our weight loss challenge ended. And a lot of those healthy habits about drinking a bunch of water and taking a vitamin every day and getting more sleep. I was like, well, I got a break from that. We're going to do another weight loss challenge in two weeks. So I'm really, you know, I sat there all night because I couldn't sleep, worried that I'm not going to be able to be well enough to take my kids for the first time to SeaWorld today. Seriously felt like pneumonia. (laughs) So, um, okay, that's quite enough because nobody needs to see a lot of that. And if you noticed my shirt, uh, was a it's a chalk on it that's Mally's in in Cleveland Ohio Mally's chocolates my father-in-law I do want to shout out to Vlad Salva because he plays for their band you can see them live on holidays there they are the sweetest band in the land and you can look up Mally's chocolates and Mally's chocolates are perfect for carb night (laughs) so Vlad Salva we are very proud of you and so that's just a big shout out for him. That's the shirt, the giant shirt I'm wearing. He has to wear over his uniform, but now it's my PJs. So anyway, let's, now we're getting way off topic. Let's go see what Roger Dickerman has to 
in lightness with this week. I'm beyond excited to talk with him. And then stick around for after the interview because we'll talk about takeaways and and a little listener feedback. Okay, let's go. Okay, we're live. Hi, Roger Dickerman. How are you today? Hey, Carol. Great to be here. How are you <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. You know what? I would imagine that almost every one of our listeners knows exactly who you are, Relentless Roger, um, of Relentless Roger and the Caveman Doctor and of Relentless Fitness, but could you give it just a quick who who I am to anybody who might be tuning in for the first time and not know who you are? Sure, absolutely. So I got into fitness through a little bit of a circuitous path. Um, mm -hmm. It is not my original career. So I was a bond trader and uh, working in finance and so that was about eight years ago at this point and I sort of took a big 180 out of the industry and backed into my passion which is personal training now or I would say just general fitness exercise nutrition stress management sleep all all of that good stuff that that we talk about a lot mm -hmm. um, and then about five years ago with my partner uh, Marissa we started relentless fitness it's a personal training and small group training studio for both adults and kids and outside of my impact in Philadelphia, I'm just trying constantly to put things out online that people can use. And so that's where the Relentless Roger and the Caveman Doctor Show come in, comes in. That's where um, a book, Relentless Nutrition, comes in. And that's the path that I'm continuing to go down today. Well, that's fantastic. I did not know that you were – see, I learned, and I thought I knew everything about you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy, right? <laughs> but I I didn't know that you changed careers and that you were a business guy and bond trading and stuff like that. That that was my original path. There was a moment in time when I thought that that would be my entire future. Yeah. But um, the lifestyle just didn't click, and mm -hmm. I needed to be more active. I needed to make a little bit of a a different impact. You know, it's it's the right path for some people, but it wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah. Some of us do that. Like I have my job and I'm very fulfilled in my job. It's very connected with my kiddos and education and everything. So this is my hobby. But I'm very, someday I feel like I need, I'm going to take a leap. And that is, that, that says a lot about, okay, I'm going to do a completely different thing. It's going to be fulfilling in a different way. But you took a big chance leaving probably what was a secure path for you and and going off into uncharted business ownership, everything. It was big. It was something that I, I say today was probably stupid at the time. It was one of those things that had my whole inner circle and outer circle scratching their head all at the same time. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was something that I needed to do. And so fortunately, that somewhat naive decision at the time has, has paid off in the long run. That's, that's fantastic because that's where greatness comes from. You know, there's security. And then there's risk, but with risk can come greatness. That's, and that's very true. No. Well, that's so amazing. And we, we are, um, we're honored that you're here today because we, we reference you and Dr. Colin Champ all the time. Our, our little show has grown over here thanks to all the community, thanks to every listener that tunes in and contributes. Um, and we're just learning. And we're about motivation and, and, and trying different things for yourself. But myself, personally, I was a listener to this show, I don't know how long, it had been about six months, where I was listening to these two guys, Jake and Zach, trying to get healthy. It was more for comedic value than anything, you know, they were trying different things. And Zach Carlson somehow knew, I guess he was listening to your podcast, and he reached out, and you offered to come on. And you had a conversation, a real basic conversation with them. And I remember where I was. I was walking trails. And it really changed. It was a huge game changer for me, the way that you made it very simple for them to understand about real food and choices, about, um, you know, those carbs, those carby things, even things that say low carb, but it's a bar. Like you had him turn over. the. I'm going to link to that show because that was a really priceless show where the guys got this kind of aha and shift in their thinking about what they were choosing to try to help them lose weight. And yeah. I remember that conversation very, very well. And, and I think one of the reasons I click with your show is because you are talking to real people. You know, I get the, I get the sense that it's a very genuine, you know, ground, grounded conversation. And I think, you know, all podcasts have their place, but 
I'm sure we can both think of a few podcasts that almost seem like they're having a conversation above our heads. Oh, and, yeah. and I think that some I think that some people gravitate to that and need that, and that's perfect for them. It's just not my niche. You know, my my niche is one of my informal taglines is helping real people get real results in the real world. And right. I feel like on the day to day, I deal with people who have these real life stressors. You know, eating perfectly is not on their radar. Exercising perfectly is not on their radar. And so it's about introducing strategies that they can get 50% of the way there, 75% of the way there, and just keep helping them along their journey. So I, I think we click. In- yeah, we do. I always talk about how you're our filter, or at least mine, because I know that's one of your taglines too. If you're not going to make health and fitness your hobby and get all geeky and learn everything you can learn, then pick a filter and somebody that will distill it down for you. Definitely. And that, that we love pointing people to your show because our show, again, is about – staying motivated, but if you want the science and some real practical applications for the science, well, then you've got this trainer, and then you've got this doctor, and the la- and you guys are bringing latest stuff to us. So anyway, that's for anybody who doesn't know what you and I are trying to do. <laughs> C- Carol, you mean our, our non-existent dormant show, the, the one that hasn't recorded in three months? Don't think I'm not going to bring that up. Well, I, no. I figured out. I figured I would beat you to it and segue into it before you could. <laughs> oh my gosh, we were at Paleo FX, and that was April 10th. And Lisa Jarman came with me, and she's a listener and a big contributor to the show. And she told you at the Pecha Kucha, you know, it's been since February, Roger. And you honestly, you were like, no, it it's been just a couple weeks. And she was like, and I was like, oh no, Lisa hasn't updated her iPod because it it can't been since February, and. Then I looked in the car. I was like, they have not been out of show since February. It's not just me. So what? What's going on? Well, Dr. Champ moved back to Pittsburgh. And so, you know, we had gotten into this really nice groove in Philadelphia of literally hanging out. And those conversations were our hangouts. We would get together and sit down and turn a recorder on, and we'd have conversations. I think that's why we love to do it so much. Yeah. Um, in Pittsburgh, it, it really started off very, very well, and we leveraged Skype, and it became just like what we would do uh, in Philadelphia. But we've each had these snafus, these time periods that have extended into long stretches of, of absence. So mm-hmm. one was around the holidays, and then one was one is this large, large gap that you're seeing now in the gap. <laughs> I take responsibility for the initial portion of the gap, and I think Dr. Champ for the late portion of the gap, but there were a number of trips, you know, for, for example, to Paleo FX, there were a couple conferences in the midst of that. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, Dr. Champ has his boards, and so we're, we're just looking forward to getting through all of that and returning to Skype and recording a new episode. And, and I saw him tweet out that it was going to be like two weeks. Is that true, that we should see something in just the next couple of weeks? So my... <laughs> I'm willing to put it on the line live and say that the first week of June is going to be when we'll record our our new episode. Awesome. So the first week of June, the world, <laughs> you heard That's it right. here. <laughs> hold, hold me to it. Hold right? us to it. No, when y'all record, how long does it take you to publish it? Is it like oh, within thanks. the next 24 hours or a week later? It usually goes up a couple days later. We try to keep it semi-consistent where we record during the week, giving ourselves a little flexibility. If we, you know, schedule for a date and can't hit it, then we do another day. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then we publish at the very end of the week. So the episode usually goes up on Fridays. All right. So we're going to be looking for the end of the first week of June. (laughs) That's right. Exactly. So looking at a calendar here, that would be June 6th. That's right. That's right. That's going to be a week off for me. We're doing a Tough Mudder on June 7th. And, and you're right, when you go to these things, even though this thing is all about listeners, it's a, it's a Tough Mudder that we're doing with a couple of other shows uh, on the Firearms Radio Network and a bunch of listeners, and people are coming from all over the country to run this with us. And I want to record stuff there, but it is so hard to keep a weekly podcast going when you do anything, <laughs> when you leave down for anything. It's a, it's a trick. But I think your listeners are going to be patient. I know, you know, people need to take a hiatus sometimes for things. And you guys are definitely worth waiting for. So 
we, we appreciate. We'll try to live up to those those very very kind words, and right. we'll see. We hope people stick around, and 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 we'll uh, we'll do some rebuilding. We'll do some yeah. rebuilding. We'll get some consistent episodes out. And we'll see what happens. Well, we will help. We will help, and and that kind of brings me to well, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about. What we love is that you guys have a very structured show, unlike our show. Your show is very structured. You start out, um, you you know, with different segments. Uh, throughout the show and you'll get to a point where you'll have recent articles and you'll share um, some science that's come out and so we would if your show was going on right now we'd probably be writing you guys or asking you guys what you think about this and we've had a couple of listeners will you remember Jack Templin sure do right yeah I don't want to forget to mention Jack because Jack is a listener to our show. He's been a listener for a while. He's a gun guy. He's a, he listens to all the Firearms Radio Network shows. And Jack um, Jack lost a con an incredible amount of weight. You know, he started listening to our show and then started listening to yours. We referred him to you and other shows. He got podcast addicted. He lost like 100 pounds. It was and great. He's, he's doing the Tough Mudder with us, and we're very excited to have him on board. One of the cool things is that Jack uh, took advantage of your services over the internet. I think he did meet you once, right? Yep, he can't. He's he's in Philadelphia every now and again for work, so we were able to to sync up live. But he, you train him virtually, right? Yeah, yeah. I put together some plans for him, and 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 he follows through, and he does the execution, and you know, sort of reports back, and we tweak different things. That's amazing. We have to put it. Uh, make sure everybody knows that the links to today's show are at Fat. To fit hq.com because you'll get all of Roger's um, links to all of his stuff in there and you know even your action plan and everything is very good information for people to have links to so and definitely the fact that you train virtually but I kind of got off because I start talking about listeners when I thought about listener feedback some of the feedback we've gotten lately has been about carb night and carb backloading and what trainers think about that and for anybody just tuning in this is um, John Kiefer wrote some protocols a while back one was called carb backloading for people who specifically a way for them when you train when to eat your carbs after and I, I don't know enough about that but carb night is something that a lot of people are using in our community and finding a lot of success and it basically is six days of ultra low carb and moderate protein and then on the seventh day you have carbs in the evening and there's reasons hormones and things he thinks the evening if you're ever going to have carbs it should be in the evening um, so on the seventh day you have carbs in the evening you can kind of go crazy maybe depending on who you are and then you get right back to it and, and we're a lot of people are having a lot of success and we just wondered what your opinion was of that kind of a protocol, maybe not for a lifestyle, but for getting some short-term goals of fat loss. What do, you, do what do you know or think about it? I have a split opinion. Okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to give you both sides to it. Okay. Uh, I think you know. I think a well-rounded perspective is very important, especially when you're changing, it, you know, into something like that. Is is thinking about both the short term and the long term. So I think if we think about the short term, I, I like it. You know, I, I like. So I guess carb night is, is sort of one night a week of extended carbs and then the six days where you're eating relatively low carb. Um, but, you know, I think it can definitely bring results, period. So in that, uh, on that side of the coin, you know, I, I am in support of it. However, and I can't mention that without the however. However, mm -hmm. on the other side of it, I think the downside to carb night is if we think outside the box a little bit, it promotes uh, – dare I say, unhealthy eating habits in mm -hmm. some people. I think that some people can do this with perspective, keep it going for a while. May, may, you know, who knows? Maybe it works indefinitely for some people. Others use it as sort of a short-term results generator. But for, for those with you know, some eating issues or who are on the borderline of eating issues, I think it can promote um, binging. You know, quite, quite frankly, is, is locking down for six days and getting very used to a binge repeat cycle and in the long run for those kinds of people who are prone to eating issues and I, you know I wouldn't put myself so far out of that I I grew up on horrible food and I grew mm -hmm. up as a you know slightly chubby kid who um, 
you know, is very used to that side of things. So uh, the binge repeat cycle for me is has become a, a horror show and something I try to get out of uh, uh -huh. as much as much as possible. And so that would be my concern. That would be my concern is the long term for certain people really just embracing that that binge cycle and at some point that breaking down in the long run. So that like okay Saturday night was my carb night. Mhm. Mm it was um very a, a very ridiculous carb night and it always yes. is. Yes. Yes. And I always well, tell it has to be. Yeah. I, I tell myself because for women especially he says, you know, maybe a starch on the side of your meal, like potatoes or rice or something, and a cheesecake dessert is all you gals might need because we have different issues with sensitivities mm -hmm. or not being sensitive and different things. So guys might be able to go crazy. Women, if it's not effective, try pulling back on how crazy, binging you guys. I can't. I really, I have those issues, like you say. I'm like, I'm like okay, I'm going to have some tortillas with butter and bread and the things that I miss and love. And um, it, it, you start to panic that this is the last time I'm going to have this for seven days. I'm not going to have one. You know, I'm not going to yes. have just two. And, I, you know, and I'm okay with it because I kind of get sick. It's in the evening. So you, you don't, you really can't go too crazy like the whole day. And then you're like kind of over it very soon. And you're really looking forward to getting back to your low carb life by you know, very, or at least I am. Like I make myself kind of sick, and I don't know. It seems, um, yeah, I can see where if like the next day I couldn't get back on it, or the next day I couldn't get back on. You know what I mean? If it was very detrimental in the long run, I I really see some dysfunction Saturday night going on. <laughs> Absolutely, and and also you have to have to recognize there's a reason why that dysfunction is going on because you are really depriving yourself over those over the course of those six days. So it's sort of building in in two senses. One, it's building in the psychological sense, where in the psychological sense you're looking for that release that's you know been there in the past. And yeah, you know, let, let's be honest. I mean, we all well, many of us use food as at least some semblance of a release, right? So right. psychologically, that's building over the course of the week. Also, you know, physically. Uh, that is building because, mm -hmm. you know, for all of the buzz about ketosis, I don't look at ketosis as a long-term strategy unless you have extreme metabolic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe in those cases, yes, maybe it can be a long-term solution. However, for most of us, especially those who are training for things like Tough Mudders, who mm -hmm. uh, are training just, you know, just even a couple times in the gym, I think that uh, ketosis doesn't quite work long-term only for short-term bursts. And so, uh, you know, keeping these things in mind is, is important. Right, right. So now, now, real, real quick, Carol, uh, one thing that I gravitate a little bit more toward rather than carb night, which one night a week, you know, again, I feel like in the, sh the short-term results box, this is something that can definitely work to get extreme and amazing results. However, I just question whether it works. Remember my thing, helping real people get real results in the real world. Right. I have these people who, with personalities I call terminators, and I think for people who are terminators, this is going to work very, very well. For the vast majority of others, I, I just don't know if it's a viable strategy. Mm -hmm. But someone who's very similar is Nate Miyake. Are you fam familiar with Nate Miyake? He was at right. PaleoFX this year. No. So Nate Miyake, I, th I think he calls it... Um, I don't know, so, something about feasting at night. Uh, so it's a similar strategy. It's just not carb night. It's sort of within each day, yeah. backloading, backloading your carbohydrates to dinner time. Mm -hmm. that, I, that, I believe, is a long-term viable strategy, allowing yourself carbohydrates each day, not massive amounts, but it keeps it a little bit more balanced out. But mm -hmm. you keep your early day low, and you add them in with your dinner at night. I think that promotes healthier sleep uh, and a number of other things. So I think it's adopting some of Keeper's approach, but you know, stretching it out over the course of the week and not having those extreme binge moments. Um, so it's something to consider as well. Right, right. That's interesting. I wonder, I might play around with that. It's, it's all about, I think, who, what your goals are and who you are and knowing Definitely. yourself. Because I'm I'm a real all or nothing person, so this is working very well for me. Because I, I a little bit of carbs each day, I haven't found um, that I I might be able to do it, but I'm not like happy in that. And and there's cravings and things that are associated with that. And the ketosis, 
um, you know, I have difficulty getting into ketosis, but now I don't have to worry about whether I'm really in or not. I just know after a couple of days, I'm, my cravings are gone and I feel pretty good about eating ultra low carb. Then I don't want to do that forever either. So I know there's a day coming up where I'm going to have whatever I missed. And psychologically that works because I don't feel bad that I fell off the wagon. wagon. You know, I'm supposed to have those. It's all a big jigsaw puzzle, right, <laughs> for each one of us. Well, that's a huge, I mean, you have perspective. You have really, really healthy perspective, and that's what it's all about. I mean, I would encourage, you know, for those with that kind of perspective, you absolutely should. If you're excited about it, you should try mm -hmm. Kiefer's Carb Night. You should try all, all of these different approaches and see what it's doing for you because you've come to some realizations. You've come to some realizations about right now at this exact point in your life what consistent carbohydrates do to you. Like you said, they awake some cravings, and it's just not working for you. So it sounds like this approach is coming around at the right time for you. Mm -hmm. I think my my goal is always, you know, just being aware, it, helping people become aware of, hey, this approach is breaking you, or, hey, if we make this one little tweak, we'll get a lot more out of it, and just you know, staying aware, making those tweaks, evolving, trying different things, and you know, ultimately we all end up in the right place if we can keep that healthy perspective. That is so golden, and that is one thing I'm seriously grateful to you and to Dr. Champ because it's it's something, it's such a, a total shift and a paradigm shift when I heard you guys, like I said, when I heard you on our, our show, it, and I started, I didn't just start thinking about food differently, I started thinking about how I eat, like at the time I had, well, I'm doing this diet, it's working or not working, I'm doing this other diet, it's working or not working. And after I listened to you, I started thinking, oh, it's going to be a little different. It's going to take me a while to figure out for myself. And, I, and I'm still trying to figure it out. But I had um, a, a listener ask me yesterday and write me, okay, I'm trying to do, she used carb night, but I want a list of can and cannot foods. Can you give me a list? I'm like, well, I don't think that's the right, I think, it's an experiment, right? I mean, it, it, understand what foods do, and then you have to understand what those foods do to you. It's like a whole tracking, figure out, tweaking, tracking, because I can't, I can't give you a, a specific diet of you can eat this, you can't eat this. I mean, there's some general things that you should know to stay away from, big message things. But I think a lot of people are still looking for, well, I'm doing the this diet, and and I'm doing it right or I'm not doing it right. Well, dieting is, so to talk about something we had earlier, that, that binge repeat cycle, right? right? Dieting is another form of that. And so that's why I hate the word diet. diet. Okay. You know, I always, I always try and transition over to lifestyle. It's one of the things I talk about a lot. But, you know, I have this, I have this realization that I try and bring all my clients, especially those clients that I work with long term, that I know that, you know, even if I depress them in a given week, that I can sort of pull them back the, the very <laughs> next week and that we get a lot of face time and I can explain you know, in-depth concepts, and, and then that's okay. So something I try to explain to people is this. If you want to change your life, you have to, it's not debatable, you have to change your action patterns, at least to some extent, right? And I, I think the way certain people think about it is, I'm going to go on this diet, and I'm going to fix everything. And that may be true for the short term, but what tends to happen is the diet takes place for, let's say, four, six, eight, ten, you know, insert your number of weeks. And then things go back to the way they were. And, you know, they get to the top of the, their own personal mountain, and then things go back to the way they were, and they slip down the other side of the slope. And I don't think that that's anyone's long-term goal. So I have this realization that I try and present to people, and it's, it's both empowering and it's also really depressing, where your action patterns need to change for the long haul. And... For some people, again, that's depressing because it's like, oh, well, I want to get all fired up for this eight-week diet, <laughs> and that's it. You know, I want to get to the top of that mountain. I want to look good for my bathing suit or whatever the motivation is behind it, and they're not really thinking about anything past those eight weeks. And if you tell them, hey, these need to stick around for forever, really, if you want to retain these results, that's, that's very depressing. But what it also is, it's empowering because I think if you acknowledge that, then you don't have to do such extreme things in the short term. Because the binge repeat cycle is about extremes. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about just eight weeks and getting into that bathing suit, and that's it, that's all you're thinking about, you're going to do very, very extreme things in the short term to make that happen. And if you do, you will get into that bathing suit. But weeks 10, 11, 12 won't be pretty. 
<laughs> doing those extreme things in the short term is going to lead to that snapback extreme in the long term. And so my clients are around for the long term, or at least I try to treat every client relationship as if it's a long term discussion, right? So if they're around for the long term, I can't set them up for that. And so when we talk about, even I have a transformation program, and that's an aggressive eight weeks. But even within that program, it's been around for almost five years. And early, early on, you know, almost five years ago, it was very much about that aggressive, super, super aggressive time period with not much of an eye towards the future. But as you go years through it and you have, and I've had 200 people come through the program, you start to realize, oh shoot, you know, I'm setting some people up for long-term failure uh, in a sense. I'm setting certain personalities up for right. long-term failure in a sense. So I've morphed the program and I've really changed it at the cost of some short-term amazing, you know, stunning results. Now the results are just good, but put them on a path for long-term great success and I think that's a huge difference and I think that people you know I, I would hope in people's heart of hearts they really come to programs like that in pursuit of a solution not just a short-term fix absolutely absolutely I'm I mean I I find it priceless and I just listen to your show you know w weekly that what some of the advice that you had about changing the way you think about food that didn't get me anything in that next two or three weeks like the things I had been trying and failing, you know, short-term success, but a bounce back worse than I was, you know, but the, the knowledge that I got and continued to get, I'm in such a better place now. And that's what you want. You want things that build you as a learner about yourself and your fitness and stuff. So I think that's golden. That's wonderful. And, and people find a balance between what, what they might want to do in the short term and what hopefully what they want to do in the long term. Definitely, that's, definitely. That's great. That's why I think our shows work very well together. Like you said, we'll keep them in the game that's right. and, and listen to you guys for the science. So that's wonderful. One thing um, I did, uh, I had written you and told you I wanted to talk about, um, just to kind of shift gears here, is I did want to talk about recovery. And I told our, our listeners that we were going to be talking a little bit about recovery. It's kind of the hot thing. Maybe I'm new on the scene and maybe I'm not right. But we used to hear a lot about uh, different protocols and different things you should be doing. And for the last, I don't know, while we keep hearing about downtime and rest time and recovery. And I used to think, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to, I've, I've got weight loss goals over here, okay? <laughs> that, that rest and recovery are for people with, that are already where they need to be. And last week I really had, um, I haven't been sick in years. I pride myself on the amount of vegetables and healthy living that I do, and I'm not perfect, but it's really a difference from before in how healthy I stay, thankfully. But I got this little bug, and you know I'm not going to take any medicine. I don't take anything unnatural except Splenda, and I need to get off Splenda. But anyway, I I uh, I tried to just write it out, and I I didn't go to the gym and I didn't work out. I, I thought I'm I'm pulling back, I'm scaling back. But we got these Fitbits. See my Fitbit? <laughs> and we have these little competitions. Oh, you have one too. Oh my god, we're gonna talk. We can, we can talk about that, yeah. We'll talk we're about that next. About that next. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it really spurred me on uh, Maureen Nucleus and some other people in our community. We have a whole Fitbit community. And I didn't and I'm getting ready for a tough mutter. And to me, the walking to not cramp up on those 12 miles is like key. So I kept walking like every day. I was trying to, I got walked six miles one day and three miles and two miles, very casual walks. But I mean, I got so sick that this weekend I was supposed to take my kids to, to SeaWorld and overnight I had such fever and chills and congestion. And I thought I was, I thought I had pneumonia. I went to emergency clinic. I mean, I got myself so sick and I'm kicking myself because I really, I think I, it was about not taking the down, true downtime. Um, I, I don't, I didn't get enough sleep. I know I didn't get enough sleep last week. I don't know. What, um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on what all I just said? Well, I think it all starts with our, our real world markers, right? And I think that general energy levels, sickness, you know, these kinds of things really can guide us as mm -hmm. to whether our 
overall holistic approach is working. And when I say overall holistic approach, I mean exercise, throw exercise, nutrition, sleep and stress management, as well as maybe our, our mentality or mindset all into one bucket. And let's say that all combines as our, our, our health and fitness approach, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that those kinds of markers, you know, even if you don't want to get deep down into to blood markers and biomarkers and those kinds of things, I think just, are you getting sick? Are you recovering well? How, how are your general energy levels? I think these kinds of things can guide us and open our eyes as to, hey, uh-oh, we, we, we need to do something. Because one, one of the other things I talk about a lot is a stress cup. I think that all we all genetically have a different size stress cup. And when I say stress cup, all of our stressors, emotional, uh, you know, business or work stress, um, and exercise stress, all exercise is a stressor, whether it's a light or a heavy stressor. Uh, nutrition, digestion is a stressor. Uh, sleep or, you know, potential lack of sleep is a stressor. All of these things pour into our stress cup. And when that stress cup overflows, and again, this is a simplified analogy, but one that I really like to use, when that stress cup overflows, bad things happen and we mm. get sick and our immune system goes down for the count. And I think if your personal stress cup is overflowing, which is very natural, especially when you're training for something like the Tough Mudder, that's a that's a tough, well, it's in the name, but that's a tough race. It's a yeah. really tough race. And I think that going into that is a lot of mileage, is a lot of pounding. And you have kids and you have a job and you have all these other things going on in your life. And so your stress cut may have just tipped over a little bit. And that's okay. It's just a signal to you to maybe tweak a thing or two and to pull back a little bit. And this gets into that recovery discussion. So I think to pull it all the way back around to that, recovery is essential and recovery thought of another way recovery is the only way you're going to get results from your training because I think a lot of people think okay if I work out more I get more results if I can do you know more running work or if I can do more strength work I will just continue to build down that path yeah and, and in fact past a certain point the opposite is true because if you are constantly pushing down that path you're not giving the body any opportunity to recover from, rebuild from, and re-strengthen from that stressor. That makes so much sense. You know, when, and, and we hear that, and we say we know that, but we get addicted to the feeling of the exercise. Yes. And, and a lot of us are in groups, and like the Fitbit, it's a daily thing. What are you doing today? And, and you don't... I mean, you, and also I talked to my girlfriends about like this week now that I'm, I'm forced to, to stop for a few days. And, and so I am, we know that when we slow down, it's a trajectory maybe in the wrong direction and we're not going to get the motivation to get back on the exercise. We've, we've kind of, so it's a tricky thing to let yourself have a day or so off and make sure that you are going to get back to it. Well, I mean, one thing, one suggestion for listeners who maybe have the same issue, because I totally understand that. I completely understand. I mean, habits are, you know, you, you develop this habit. You don't want to break it. You know, right. You want to keep going. Um, so one thing I suggest to people is planning your rest, is literally scheduling your rest. This is something I talk about with people with stress management, too. I say mm -hmm. schedule your meditation or schedule your time away. And that seems so counterintuitive, right? If you're meditating or if you're taking relaxing time, why would you have to schedule that? But Many of us work off of schedules. I know me personally with all the clients that I see, I work off of a Google, Google Calendar. And if I don't have my Google Calendar updated, there's a chance something's slipping my mind or not getting done. And so simply having that block of time that literally stares you in the face when you look at your version of a calendar that says rest or that says meditate or whatever your form of, of relaxation is, whether, I don't know, you treat yourself to a massage, whatever it is, mm -hmm. write it down. Write it down in your calendar, the same calendar that you would prioritize work events and, and life events. Then you'll make time for it. And then it will seem like a contained event, not like something that spills into the next day and then the next day and then the next day. It's contained. It's there. It's the stretch of, uh, of some hours or a day you know, and then you move right back into the rest of your calendar and get on with your life and get back to your positive habits. I love that. I think that's really important, especially, well, I used to always say for moms, you know, because working moms or stay at home moms, it's even harder. You know, you have such a full plate that you need to schedule the exercise and it's not selfish. You need it because you're a good model and you'd be healthier and all that. 
And then to, that's hard enough to get people. But, but anyway, it's not just moms. I know now every everybody, you know, my husband and other people, everybody has a, a completely full plate. So, yeah, I used to just beat that wagon, uh, the, that drum that you need to schedule your fitness. You need to schedule your exercise and your nutrition and make it a priority. I never thought about if if that feels selfish to do that, how selfish it would feel to schedule downtime and me time and rest time. But it it really truly is. People need to understand how that that is a, that is a, just as important as the nutrition and exercise is that recovery time and that down let low stress time. Definitely. I mean, e even if you put you know every time you put a piece of exercise on your calendar even if you balance that out by putting something in the world of stress management or relaxation on your calendar mm -hmm. and you know that may seem like well I can't I can't devote the time to that but even honestly even if you took you know for the stress management side even if you put five minutes on your calendar you know that you're gonna take five minutes in the morning or five minutes at night um, to do something like that that'll go a long way but yeah. the, you know the way to really again think of exercise that time that you're you're inputting, especially as the workouts get more intense. Now that yeah. that's that's a big distinction, right? Because if you're having low grade, low intensity workouts, uh, you know recovery is not as high of a priority because you're not overstressing your body. But if again, if you're training for tough mutters and if you're doing aggressive strength work and the, you know those intense sprinty or crossfitty kind of workouts, you absolutely need s straight downtime where you're, you're not taxing your body at all. So when you're scheduling those kind of workouts in, if you want the results from those workouts, the rest is a priority because otherwise the results won't come or the results won't come the way you want or it'll lead to injury, breakdown, sickness, etc. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. And I think we all, I, I think, am I, am I off thinking that it, you're hearing more about that now and a more, a more of an emphasis on rest and recovery or is it just because I'm, looking for that now more. No, I think I think you're right and I think part of it is you know dare I say because of some of the CrossFit culture. Yeah. I think uh, you know and not just CrossFit, I think a lot of different um, disciplines of exercise have gotten to the same place at the same time or a similar place at the same time. And that is uh, you know you see a lot of figures out there who are let's say coaches, gym owners, um, you know what whatever whatever that may be, they're burning themselves out. And I think when you burn yourself, you, when you burn yourself out, you have to look for solutions. And I think there are a number of different people out there who have burnt themselves out, have searched for solutions, and are now beating the drum of recovery. Yeah. And and it's important because you know it can it can sort of um, teach other people to avoid that cycle because it's very easy to to get burned out. And I think some people hit rock bottom to the point that they need a long time to recover and bounce back from that. And that's not what any of us want. No. Okay. Well, I think there's a lot for us to think about there. There's recovery to get the results you want, or you're caught in a hamster wheel of never giving your body the chance to actually build what you've broken down. And then there's recovery. I think rest and recovery just for lower cortisol, just for everybody's stressed out lives so that you're not sitting in San Antonio with your kids wanting you to take them to SeaWorld and you didn't take care of yourself, so you're kind of lame, mom. Then, <laughs> when they, I mean, we went, but my husband had to do so much of the work and the running around to the roller coasters and the shows, and I was like lagging behind. And I'll meet you guys. I'm sitting this one out, and it wasn't good. You know, you don't want that either. Um, you know, so for everyday life, I think we need to take care of ourselves with rest. Uh, when when your body starts giving you those signals and those markers, really take your time out, even when they're not, you know, in everyday life. So I appreciate all that advice. Definitely. And I'm going to shift again because we're going to run out of time soon. But you showed me your Fitbit. Get yeah. out of town. Tell yeah. me about that. When did you get it? Uh, actually, very recently. Got this about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, oh my gosh. I've had clients for a long time who have kept Fitbits or, or similar devices, uh -huh. and they've sort of shared their data with me. And I think that uh, my, my perspective on it or, or my acceptance of it has grown over time as I've yeah. seen it impact other people's lives. Um, a company that I work with and do programs with, the, the last iteration of that program, every single participant had a Fitbit. Wow. Track their steps and sleep. 
and that that's it's huge to have. And so I've uh, both Marissa and I have, have gotten Fitbits now about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and it's been fun. It's been it really fun. fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I could see it being something that we use in, intently for three to six months or so, and then it sort of naturally drops off a little bit. But I think it's extremely valuable for um, whether it's a short-term push, whether it's to open your eyes to the sleep that you're getting or not getting, um, right. to the evolution of your steps as the seasons go by, as the weather changes. I think that these things are, are really important. And again, f fun. It's, it's sort of gamifying your activity. It's totally gamifying your activity. That's such a great way to say that. We have such a huge Fitbit group, a guy named Dion Denton, who turned his life around um, when a few other friends threw down the gauntlet and challenged him to a weight loss challenge. Okay, so he he started, it's all about activity for him. He had his diet under control, and so he was so big on the Fitbit that he started our group, and the group has grown, and we have challenges within our Fat to fit bitter community, and it really, truly is, you know, an, an awareness. And for first of all, at the end of the day, if you have a sedentary amount of steps, you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't move a lot today. But at the end of the day, if I see I've got ten thousand steps or more, well, maybe I don't need to go to the gym. I've walked. I've been very active today. Um, but the challenge part of it too, the gamifying of it and, you know, seeing your friends and who you're passing and cheering and taunting and all of that, it's been a, it's been a blast. It's making fitness kind of fun. Definitely. I think it's, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say enough about it to where a lot of clients have had really positive experiences with it. Mm -hmm. And so in turn, you know, when you see so many people having a positive experience of something, you can't help but try it yourself. And so. You know, I say, get a Fitbit, have fun, go down that road, and uh, the one thing, just don't feel the need to uh, to compete with someone, and then to uh, get up at the middle of the night and, and and take steps around the house because you're trying to beat their. Is their that something? Are you speaking from experience, Roger? I'm, I'm speaking from from stories, from from <laughs> stories that I've that I've heard. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's there's no need to do that. There's no need to take it that far. But. I know, I know. It, just like anything, it can be abused, right? Yes. Of course, of course. <laughs> I can see that because I have, I have been at 9,950 yep. steps and gone, you know what, kids, let's walk around the living room. Let's walk Here around the living room. <laughs> so dysfunctional, mom. That's not a good model. So I know it's, it's with, as with anything, use it as a motivator, but it can be a great little motivator. It's Absolutely. a lot of fun. I used to hate how ugly it was as, in terms of jewelry. And now I'm like all proud of it because everybody asks. That's about right. It. It, it really it, the trend is definitely growing. It's still on the way up, not the not the way down by any means. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fun. So we'll link to that as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, Roger, I just can't. I don't want to let you go. I know we we're on too long now, and we have to honor your time and let you go. Okay, Carol. One like... one more thing I want to pass oh, good, along. Good. Well, one more little thing because a lot of our conversation today has has gotten me here, and I definitely want to share this because. Uh, well, let me just out and say it. Um, I think that with all of the information out there right now, with exercise, nutrition, like you said, recovery is now coming onto the scene heavily. Uh, it can get really overwhelming. This is something I like to talk about a lot. Things can get really, really, really overwhelming. And I think one of my major messages to people would be in moments like that where you feel like you've seen seven different dietary approaches and you don't know which way is up and which way is down and you wish someone would just tell you exactly what you can and can't do and mm -hmm. that, that way you could stick to that. I would just give everyone a big message of breathe, relax, and chill out because none of it is worth that. And when it gets to that point, it starts to become really counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And I would say at the base, you know, at the bottom of all of these approaches, everything you're reading about in all of these different disciplines, the baseline is really rooted in very basic fundamentals. And you can try all the diets you want, but if you eat well-rounded all the time, you're really not going to harm yourself, and in fact, you're going to help yourself. If you stick to basic fundamental strength and movement and wear your Fitbit and get active and stay active, you're really going to help yourself, not hurt yourself. 
if you just sleep more and try to increase the quality of your sleep, you're going to help yourself, not hurt yourself. And I think if in those moments when things get overwhelming, you can just breathe and look at those baseline fundamentals, you're going to be in a great place. That's so important for us to hear. With the information overload that's out there right yes. now, it's a blessing and a curse. No, it no really... doubt about it. And there are, there are going to be moments of your life when you are ready for you know, this, this new, new way, this, this new way to approach things. And you're going to get all fired up and you're going to do it. And those are great times. But there's also going to be times when you are overstressed, when your stress cup is overflowing. And in those moments, just look at the basic fundamentals. Move, sleep, relax, eat well, and just be done with it. That's just so golden. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> we overcomplicate everything. Um, yeah, but that's great. No, I appreciate that because I mean, we just, we constantly do shows about that, about, okay, how to not get overwhelmed. And we make that overwhelming, <laughs> mm -hmm. how to not be overwhelmed. So I think that's great to have some just fundamental advice. Thank you very much for that. Also, though, in that, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I got your action plan when it first came out, and it's golden, and I recommended it to people. Very simple, long-term success type of each day. There's one thing that you can do. One yep. thing that if you do this, by the end, you've you've done 30. How many actions did we 50, do? 56. 56. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very doable because each day was just one thing to do differently. It wasn't a stressor, and it was just a moving. And it was either learning about something or doing something. And so I love that. You still have that out there, right? Yeah, so that actually uh, that went through a, a, a year-long evolution where I wrote it live and yeah. released it, released it each and every day as I was putting pen to paper, or in, in this case, fingers to keyboard, I guess you could say. Um, and then I published it officially as this year kicked off. So you know, as 2014 kicked off. So yeah, that is the Relentless Nutrition Action Plan, and it's it's on Amazon. So um, mm -hmm. I'm excited just to have that out there. Yeah, we'll link to that. Because we've had we've heard from people how successful it is, and I knew it was. We got to hear it come out, but then I also ordered it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, just, thank you very much. Yes, and we refer people to that because it's very doable. And so then they can contact you also if interested in online personal training, right? Yep, it's something I do as well. You know, I have my live clients in Philadelphia, and I also invite those you know from afar to do things like Skype consultations and. And those and those things. I am going through some website revampments, you know, this this year. So, um, you know, right now it's always going to be at relentlessroger.com, but um, I will go through some some iterations. You should see some new stuff from my end, of my neck of the woods as 2014 goes along. Great. Well, that's what I was going to ask: is what's next? So. So I, I'll I'll tease it. It's it's definitely in the brainstorm phases, but I'll tease it a little bit. So that relentless transformation program that I do, I've done one virtual iteration. Mm -hmm. um, I've done now almost 20 physical in Philadelphia iterations, and again, about 200 people have been through the program. So I'm always looking for ways to evolve, but it's about to hit its five-year anniversary. So I'm looking to do something super special for for five years. So uh, post Labor Day will okay. be the five-year program and I'm, uh, my goal is to have something that anyone can do from anywhere and that's all I can say about it right now. Okay, that's a good <laughs> teaser. That's a good teaser because we're all everywhere and so exactly. We'll, exactly. we'll make sure and keep following for that. That'll be fun. So we have a couple of big things coming up. Right after Memorial Day, we should start hearing you and Colin put out more shows. Yes. I'm sorry, Dr. Champ. And then will that'll carry us through to the end of the summer when we are going to see some real cool things even more cool come out through your website definitely offerings well that's fantastic that's good news for everybody and if you missed Roger Dickerman at Paleo FX I feel for you because that was so much fun to get to see you live your your talks were great the stuff you moderated was great it was wonderful to meet you in person and it was just a big thrill for all of us. So are you going to be at um, the Ancestral Health? Any Anything else? Any other speaking things have, you have coming up? Probably not this year. We have a, a lot going on the Philadelphia side. For, for anyone out there who is happens to be in Philly, yeah, we're looking to do a lot of cool stuff on the landscape and 
uh, expand our location and, and lot, lots of cool stuff. But part of that is it's that seesaw, right? If you do a lot of effort on the local front, mm -hmm. um, you, can't, you can't travel as much. So probably not. Although, you know, hey, if if I, I am open to last minute changes. So if, mm -hmm. if something shifts and I'm able to take the time out, uh, I'll, I'll take the flight. But I, I wouldn't expect it, unfortunately. But well, okay. I would say a big have fun. I've been there several times. Uh, it, it's amazing. I think this year, what is San Francisco? Somewhere in California. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't know. But yeah. we'll link to that as well. It's Ancestral Health Symposium, isn't that it? Yes. Health. Okay. And yeah, we'll link. But if you're in the Philadelphia area, then you could see. Also, our streaming from pa Paleo FX should be coming out pretty soon if it's not out already. I think so. so. I think you're right about that. Yeah. Yeah. So people could catch you there. Okay. Well, I hate to say goodbye, but we'll we'll just talk to you soon, and we'll be hearing from you very soon. In just a few weeks, we're going to hold you to it. Okay. Sounds great. Have a, a Carol. Always appreciate the support. You're okay. a wonderfully positive woman, and and the, the show that you run is I'm sure changing many many people's lives. So keep up the great work, and and thanks for all you do. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for saying that because, you know, we think the world of you. So that's high praise. Thanks, Roger. Okay, say hi to Dr. Champ and just keep doing great, amazing things. We will chat soon. Will do. Take care. Okay, thanks. Bye. Well, that was a fantastic interview. <laughs> Roger's part of it anyway. <laughs> Big Big thanks again to Roger Dickerman, again, all-time hero of mine, and I really appreciate what those guys are doing over there. All the links, one more time, are in the show notes. Today, they are at fat2fithq.com slash 093, and you can get plugged into Roger Dickerman and all kinds of things fat to fit hq So, big takeaway from that was the party he ended, he ended with. I mean, lots of big takeaways. But I want to reiterate that whole breathe thing. <laughs> because, I mean, we just did a show last week. We're always talking about how overwhelmed we are. And, and to just step back sometimes and go, okay, there's some basic things I know I'm supposed to do about food and moving and getting some rest. I can take a lesson there, obviously. And, and then I'm good. And if, if on a whim I want to try something and tweak and, you know, something amazing, then do that. But most of the time we should just breathe and keep trying to do some of the basic things. So excellent, as always, Golden. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, Roger Dickerman. And, okay, before I forget, next week we have Ben Greenfield on the show. Okay, Ben Greenfield is kind of a big deal, <laughs> kind of like Roger Dickerman. I have to give Roger props because he was going to do the show before Paleo FX, but um, at Paleo FX, I hounded Ben Greenfield around until he agreed to do the show, so that's great. He'll be on next week. <laughs> but no, he thought of a great, a, a cool things we're going to talk about, like the fact that many of us are hunters and, you know, probably well-sourced animal proteins and stuff like that. I have a million questions for him. So if you have any, email them to me at carol at fat to fit hq.com. But we're excited to have Ben on the show. Also, I want um, to put a big shout out to people who have been writing and joining my fitness pal and joining our Fitbitter group. Um, how fantastic that Roger has a Fitbit. Oh, I'm going to go try to friend him right now. <laughs> he probably thinks I'm such a stalker, but that's okay. So, um, yeah, if you are friending me on my fitness pal, it would be so awesome if you put your name, if you care for me to know your name, because those handles are really kind of crazy. <laughs> I can't tell what people's names are, but that's all right. And it, it's great having more friends on there. And a note to you guys is that look in my friend um, bank of friends. Most of those people have friended me because of this show. So you may take a chance and try to friend other people that look motivating in there. They will probably say yes. But also go to our My Fitness Pal group. We have a fat to fit group. And you know all those folks would be your motivating friends through this show. So, yeah, thanks for that. And iTunes, anybody who is connected to iTunes, we really appreciate your iTunes reviews. It really helps the show, especially since the host doesn't have any time to market the show. 
<laughs> it will grow otherwise unless you guys help with liking the Facebook page. And, you know, the iTunes reviews are golden. There was um, A. Cocorellis who just left us an iTunes review. I have a feeling that's Anna Cocorellis from Facebook. I know who you are, Anna. <laughs> but she says... Thank you. Five stars. Thank you, Carol, for this funny and informative podcast. Your journey is similar to mine, and it's good to know that I'm not alone. You're an inspiration. Well, Anna, you're an inspiration. <laughs> for real, thank you very much for that iTunes review. I'm eternally grateful. Um, but I, yeah, if you're going through the same kind of stuff I'm going through, which is changing hormones and trying to figure it out and kind of tinkering and tweaking and successes and failures and it's we're making it fun but it's still hard work and so rock on girlfriend and you know keep it up and thank you for the feedback and I, I'm very inspired by anybody who writes in to let me know that they're they're doing the same so thank you also um I got some feedback from a couple of folks I do want to say hi to Patia from England who's been my pen pal for a couple weeks she's a mom like me she has little ones she's trying to figure it out she's doing a little carb night a couple little things but she's been a big motivator so Patia keep it up girlfriend and I got an email from Brad today and that is Brad Wolfram from Austin and this guy's about my age he's about 50 and he's done five marathons but he let work and everything distract him so now he's back on the getting healthy bandwagon and he says he's got about another 20 pounds slew so that's super fantastic, Brad. I really enjoyed emailing with you. And I think it's great that you listen to our show on your walks because I listen to other people's shows on my walks. And I know if you find that helpful, I'm stoked about that completely. So thanks for writing me. And um, just keep it up. And thanks for coming out to the Fitbit group too. Anybody else who wants to join my Fitness Pal with us or the Fitbit group, the links are in the show notes. Again, fat2fithq.com slash 093. I want a quick uh, update on my carb night because in another person's carb night because uh, people keep asking me. I have stopped losing weight, but I'm very close to where I wanted to be. So um, I'm cool with that because I'm not really interested in, in pulling back on my carb night, which I know that would probably make the difference. And, and I'd start to drop weight again, but I'm having too much fun. I'm not gaining weight and I'm having these ridiculous carb nights. But just like Roger said, if my personality were one that I would start binging and it would, I mean, if I start feeling like this is a detrimental thing because of my personality or my um, issues with food, then you know, I have other issues with food. <laughs> this one is not an issue, so it's okay for me. I'm really finding a lot of success and I have a lot of people writing in, that are finding success with carb night. But I did have somebody contact me and let me know that it did it was awful for her. And it was right after Roger and I recorded. So it was really bizarre. But exactly what he said. She cannot recover from the carb night. She's finding that out. That she eats more carbs the next day. More carbs the next day. And it results in a weight gain. So, you know, I applaud everybody who's trying something. And, and if you're recognizing that that's not working for you, you're shifting gears, but continuing to learn about yourself. I really don't, I, like I say a lot, I don't think it's a particular diet that's going to save us. Um, I'm not a nutritionist or a doctor, but I have found that if you look at whatever diet you're trying and what the principles are of that why why does that work for people don't look at just do this for this many days or have this much of this why and so that's the gold I think is trying things understanding about what food does in your system and then tinkering and tweaking like Jimmy Moore told us just continue to track tinker and tweak and that, that will be probably the answer. A quick update on Maureen Euclid. She lost way more than 50 pounds now. If y'all saw that show a couple a couple weeks back, she did a week of carb night and she dropped past her plateau. And now she's doing some juicing again. I, Maureen is really starting to, you know, do that whole journey. What's working for me? Here's one more thing for my arsenal to kind of figure it out. So rock on, Maureen. The gun runners, I'm going to end by saying gun runners, you guys are awesome. If you did not see the show last week, 
please go look at the YouTube video of Alex Patterson from the Tough Mudder organization who joined us to answer our questions. We're more freaked out than ever, <laughs> but that's okay. Big, big shout out. We have like one week left once this airs, a week and a few days. So guys, be slowing down, stretch, 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 lots of water, more stretching, and, and you'll be good. You'll be good. Carolina Schmidt, Bill Schmidt, We've got Aaron Eastridge, Jack Templin, Cynthia Crom, Stacy Knickerbocker, and Lisa Jarman. And then from We Like Shooting, we have Aaron Krieger. And from Talking Lead, we have Zeke and Left Hand, who are both running with us. So the Gun Runner team, man, come on Facebook. It's just really a lot of fun. You'll be able to know where we're going to be on June 6th. We're going to go somewhere for dinner if you're in the Nashville area. Maybe you can meet up um, or come out on June 7th to the Tough Mudder venue for 20 bucks. Be a spectator and, and find us. We will be posting on Facebook what our wave time is. We don't quite know yet. It's around nine in the morning. And, you know, four hours or so after that, there's going to be bands and party and it's going to be a blast. So if you could make that. But yeah, follow me on Twitter, Carol Salva one or come and like us on Facebook, you know, facebook.com slash fat to fit HQ. All right, have a healthy week, or at least do some healthy things. <laughs> and thanks again. Thanks for tuning in, and, and just keep on keeping on. All right, thanks again, Roger Dickerman. Everybody have a great week. Bye. The podcast you've been listening to has been brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network. 